Chapter 41 Objects in Git We've talked about the DAG in Git and how various commits are linked together. But we have not really delved into how Git keeps track of things under the hood. In other words, how is all this information stored in the .git folder? Git provides a content addressable file system, which is a fancy word to throw around, but really just means that Git acts as a big key value store. You give it something to store, and it will hand you back a key to retrieve it with. This key is, of course, the checksum that we've mentioned earlier. We already covered that Git uses this to store commits. We've also mentioned that Git really only knows how to do a few tricks, but manages to combine them in various ways to provide a lot of functionality. The same is true here. The way commits are stored is not unique to commits. Git has four types of objects that it stores, and commits are only one of them. So-called blob objects are what store your actual data. If you add a file to Git, the contents of that file will go in a blob object. You give it the file contents, you get an ID in return, done. This has the nice little side effect that no two identical files will ever be stored in Git. Let's say you keep your documentation in Git, which would be a smart thing to do, and you use an image to clarify something on page A and the same image on page B. Even if you store that image on disk in two locations in your repository, Git will only create one blob object for it in the .git folder because the checksum of both images are the same, so there is only one key and only one value to retrieve for that key. Another object type in Git are called tree objects. A tree object addresses some shortcomings of the blob objects. For example, we need to be able to store the file name somehow, which is different from the file contents. And if we add a bunch of files together, we need to keep track that these files belong together. This sort of information is stored in tree objects in Git. Then there are the commit objects. These are, of course, the objects we've been paying most attention to so far. In chapter 6 we explained that a commit object holds the data itself, the order, the date, the log message and the checksum of the parent commit. Well, when we wrote the commit data itself, what that means under the hood is the ID of the tree object that holds the information about the data stored for this commit. The last type of object that Git uses are for annotated tags. We've seen before how you can attach your own label to any commit in Git with the git tag command. What we didn't get into is that you can add more info to the tag, such as a message, or you can even cryptographically sign a tag. Git needs a place to store this additional information, and so there is an object type to specifically deal with this. However, the use of git tag that we demonstrated will only create the label and not create an object in Git.